Hello grade 12s. Welcome to our channel once again. My name is Velele Ngosi. In this lesson, we will learn about pedigrees. So pedigree is part of genetics and life sciences grade 12. Uh, the content of this video, uh, I will interpret pedigree diagram and then I will explain autosomal dominant, uh, autosomal recessive, uh, sex linked recessive and then I will interpret a previous question paper that contains a pedigree. So this is the content of this video. Uh, without wasting more time, let's get to it. Uh, this diagram that you see on your screen is a uh, one of the examples of pedigree. So a pedigree is a diagram of family history that uses standardized symbol. And then a pedigree shows relationship between family members and indicate which individual has a certain trait. So pedigree is used to investigate uh, some traits in a family trees. So before uh, I go further, let me explain the symbols that are standardized. Uh, if you see a square like this one, so the square represents a male and then a cycle represent a female and then if a uh, one of the square or a circle is shaded that is mean whatever that is been investigated uh, it's showed or it's visible in that particular uh, individual or it's expressed and then if it's not shaded like this one so this investigated traits it's not visible and then another thing uh these lines so these lines represent this one represent a marriage it's a marriage line so this male and this female were married and then this one ex uh, explain the offspring it's an offspring line and then we have this one this line here this is the sibling line it connect the siblings so let me show you the siblings so here we have four siblings these are the siblings which is uh, we have two males and then two females so there are four siblings and then we have another one who is not part of the family this one but what he did he marries a uh, one of the siblings and then they have another two children so here we have another siblings which are from a uh, this parent here a uh, one of the siblings of this one and then this one is from outside and then we have uh, numbers here see this one this is not this roman numbers this roman numbers represent generations so uh, we have first generation second generation and the third generations so uh, these numbers represent generations so this is how uh, we interpret a pedigree so next up, uh, let me explain autosomal dominant. Uh, in an autosomal dominant, you remember in human karyotype, we spoke about autosomes. So autosomes are chromosome from 1 to chromosome 22. So this autosomal dominant is <coughs> found only in autosomes. And then uh, it, you can't find it in sex chromosomes or in gonosomes it only found in autosomal uh, chromosomes and then the properties of autosomal dominance a uh, one copy of the variant gene is enough to show the trait so if we have a genotype and then if it happens that one of the allele is autosomal dominant and then this trait will be shown on that particular individual and then affected children usually have at least one affected parent and then the trait can appear in every generation so these are the properties of autosomal dominant now uh, i have a small pedigree here I'll, i would like to show you how uh, we work with a uh, autosomal dominant so let's say uh, we are investigating a uh, brown eye which are dominant so brown eye we represent brown eye as capital letter b and then that means the allele will be a small letter b so because here 
we found that uh, the woman here has this trait so she has capital letter b so she have brown eyes and then her daughter also have brown eyes but uh, her husband he has he has no this trait so this trait is not expressed on the husband so because this trait is dominant so that means the husband has a uh, recessive alleles and then also he, his son has recessive alleles so that is mean if his son has recessive alleles like this one that is mean a mother here has also a has heterozygous a, a genotype so this is a small letter b so because uh, the, the the son must get one a gene from the mother and then one gene from the father so that is why he have two a uh, homozygous or he have homozygous recessive and then the daughter will get one a uh, gene which is one gene of a uh, dominant from her mother and then recessive from her father so here the daughter will get a uh, b and b so this is how uh, we, we interpret this uh, pedigree so here is the pedigree with this trait is is showed at all parent and one of their their kid and then here we will have b which is capital letter b and then we'll have capital letter b and then with the capital letter b here we will also have a capital letter b which is dominant and then here we will have small letter b's which are recessive so because this daughter got one a recessive from uh, her mother and then one recessive from her father so we will have b here and then we will have b here so that is mean their son uh, will get b a uh, homozygous dominant or heterozygous or he might get b and then one b from a uh, one parent so this is how we interpret this per pedigree so this is how we interpret this pedigree and then next up uh, we go to autosomal recessive so autosomal recessive it also takes place on the autosomes and then the factors of autosomal recessive two copies of the variant gene needed to show the trait so for the trait to be shown two genes are needed and then affected children usually have unaffected parent and then the trait may skip generations so like from the previous example let's say uh, the recessive one we have b and then the dominant one we have capital letter b so for this trait to be shown we need two uh, recessive uh, alleles so here we will have b and then b and then here we we'll have small letter b which are recessive and then if the daughter got a uh, one recessive b from a uh, her mother that does mean her, her father also has one b because one b must come from the father and then the father do not have these traits that does mean uh, this she, he have b because this b must shade this one and then the son the son will get one b from his mother and then will get the capital b from his father so this is the their genotype this is the genotype of this family and then we have another one here uh, the parent do not have this trait so this trait it's not uh, showed on the parents it only showed on one on one of their kids and then on one of their kids we will have b b because here is where it is showed that is mean also parent must have a one b and then one b because here the their daughter do not have this uh, this trait and then their parents do not have this trait here they will have b and then they will have b because this son need two b's in order to get this trait and then the daughter will have will take it might be homozygous or heterozygous so the daughter might be homozygous or heterozygous so this is how 
we interpret this uh, pedigree so when you interpret this pedigree start with the kit so it's very simple if you start with the kit you start down and then going up that is where uh, it makes things easier so you start down and then you go up and then next up let's do six link recessive so uh, here it's a six link recessive uh, the six link recessive is located on the x chromosome so x chromosome we know that it's a sex chromosome uh, are often recessive allele so here we talk about the recessive alleles so this is how we write it we write x and then h and then uh, i mean a small letter h which means it's recessive and then it's more common in males than in females so this kind of disorder is more common in males than in females and the father cannot pass it to their sons remember father inherit their sign their sons a y chromosome so if this if this is only located in x chromosome that is mean the father do not uh, inherit their son the x chromosome only y chromosome so another thing more it's more common in males you remember in human karyotype we say uh, the sex chromosome of a male is x and then y while a male is x i mean a female is x and then x so because female i mean a male have only one x chromosome so if it happens that this this disorder is on male because male has got no other x and then this disorder will be visible if because he has only one x but with female if this disorder uh, is found on a female so in order for it to be visible or to be shown he, she need to have both and uh, she need to have it on both axes but if there is one x that is dominating and then this disorder will not be uh, showed but with male because he had only one x chromosome and then this disorder will be visible so this question might come during examination and then let me show you how to answer it if it come uh, here it say why male have sex link disorder more frequently it's because male have one x chromosome and then if it carries the recessive allele the male will have the disorder and then a female have two x chromosomes the dominant allele can mask the recessive allele so if one x is recessive and one is dominant the one that is dominant will uh, mask the recessive allele then she will not have the disorder or the disorder will not be shown she will be a carrier she will carry this disorder she might pass it to her offspring and then a female needs recessive allele on both uh, x chromosome in order to have the disorder so this is how you can write it during examination i hope you will get all the marks so next up i will go to one of the previous question paper so this question paper was written in november 2021 so i will interpret this pedigree here so here is the question one type of a deafness in human is carried on a single allele the diagram below shows the inheritance of deafness in a family and then here we have a tree in a family and then the key uh, unshaded is the hearing hearing male which is unshaded square and the shaded square is a deaf male and then unshaded cycle is a hearing female and then shaded cycle is a deaf female so here we have the female two parent and then their kids and then their offspring okay now uh, let's analyze so we don't know which one it's recessive or which one it's dominant but what we can find here we have this parent has this disorder and then we have this parent as the disorder but here are their kids their kids do not have this disorder they have a kid who have this disorder that is mean they both carry this disorder and then pass it to their kids this is what i can take out from this from this pedigree 
Remember, their parents, they have one parent who have this disorder. And then they do not have this disorder, but they have a kids who have this disorder. So they carry this disorder and then pass it to their kids. So this disorder is recessive. That is mean deafness is recessive. So let's say uh, here we have B, which is dominant, and then we have small letter B, which is recessive. That is mean now here we will have B as recessive, uh, homologous recessive, and then also here we will have a uh, homologous also here also this one we will have homologous and then next up here <coughs> because here they have a p and it is not visible here we will have p and a small letter p and then we will have dominant and this recessive and then in this side we will also have a b and then b and then the father uh, might have and then it might have a heterozygous and then might have also a homozygous because yes he might have a b and then b so the father might I have heterozygous and the homozygous and then the mother here she will need to have a small letter B so we will have a capital letter B and a small letter B and then this one and this one they might be the same so we will have B and then B and then now let's look at the kid because their parent have B and B so uh, they might have homozygous dominant again they might have a uh, heterozygous it's possible to have heterozygous because they might get b b or they might get b and b yeah so this is the chances of their kids but this one will not have a uh, dominant allele she will he will only have a recessive allele so this is how we interpret a pedigree so this is the end of this video i hope you find value in this video if you find value please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so if you are studying essay good luck with your studies uh, thank you very much